Hello and welcome to the patch 5.05 .05 patch notes for Final Fantasy 15. Not seen these yet. I'm excited to see them, so let's look at them together. Uh, as a result of recent balance changes, the actions required to complete the monk job quest Return of the Monk has been adjusted. Okay. I actually have no idea what that's pertaining to. If you know, please let me know in the comment section because I'm really curious. I'm going to have to look that up afterwards. Dungeons of Lea Gia have been added. A special instance similar to Aquapolis and Lost Canals of Uznair. Uh, treasure coffers obtained from Zoner skin treasure maps. That's their luck. Obtained priceless treasure. So it is more treasure map dungeons, which is great. Those are a really good way to get kill. If you've never done them before, absolutely should. They're actually really fun, too. Uh, free companies, a new craftable items been added to Company Workshop, and the following adjustments and additions have been made to some aquatic voyages. New submersible parts are available for exchange. New destinations have been added. The maximum level of submersibles has increased from 50 to 60. A water selection of items can be obtained from... Okay, cool. Nothing wrong with that. For housing, uh, it looks like we now have some actual first furnishings. So that's cool. Excited to see more of those. And new orchestrian rolls. Nice. Here's what we're all looking for, though, right? The changes for the battle system. What do I want to see before we dig into these? I want to see some astrologian changes. I want to see maybe some, maybe a couple monk changes. Uh, but other than that, there's not really much. Maybe some DPS buffs for the other tanks to bring them up to Paladin, but I think everything's really solid right now. So I'm not like super upset about where anything sits. But let's take a look here. Opal Opal form. All the forms affect duration increase from 10 to 15. It'll help a lot. Uh, just with your your basic comboing during boss fights, you have a little bit more time to be able to weave in other things or to be able to uh, avoid mechanics or do mechanics. Uh, mantra radius has been doubled. That's good. Form shift uh, extends grease lightning duration to maximum from the coral form bonus has been added to form shift. That's cool. Meditation opens all five chakra when used outside combat has been added. Oh. That seems really good. Uh, you can just start a fight with all five chakra open. Riddle of Earth. First reply bonus now nullifies all action direction requirements. So it's basically true north as well, which is really cool. Uh, Riddle of Fire. The effect increased weapon skill recast time by 15% has been removed. Damage increase reduced from 30 to 25. Okay. Because these now have extended durations, is that why Riddle of Fire doesn't... Oh, it increased. It was increasing before. Right, yeah. For a second, I've read that as decrease. So Riddle of Fire no longer makes everything take longer to recast, but it gives less damage. That's still worth it to me. Monk, for me, has always been about speed, and it feels bad when you pop that Riddle of Fire and everything's slower. So it's really cool that that, that has been removed. I like that a lot. Uh, Forbidden Chakra can now only be executable in combat and lightning. Can only... Yeah, okay. That makes sense, because now you can get all five Chakra outside of combat. Just slash potency has been increased by 50 potency. Cool. Samurai, Makios Chishui, reduced from 60 to 55 seconds. You can get it even faster now. Meditate, effect duration increased from 30 to 45 seconds. Okay. Uh, cast time has been made instant for all of your Kaishi. That's it. That's awesome. Yes, please. Thank you. Uh, Shoha, potency has been changed from 50, 100, 200, 300, 500 to 100, 300, 400, 450, 500. So the earlier ranks have been buffed quite a bit, actually. Um, doubled, tripled, doubled, um, 1.5, and then standard. So Shoha is way more useful now. That's really cool. That's a good samurai buff that I think will fix a lot of the problems people had with it so far in Shadowbringers. I see this one right here. Recast time for reassemble has been reduced by five seconds. You may look at that and go, that five seconds isn't going to matter. That five seconds means the world to me right now. Because that five seconds means I don't have to worry about the times where drill is up and there's five seconds left on reassemble. Air anchor's up and there's five seconds left on reassemble. I have seen that so often. And you have to, you have to make a choice right then. Do you go ahead and use the drill for the immediate potency because you're trying to burn down this boss? Or... Do you wait the five seconds and use other abilities? And that throws off your entire rotation. And that five seconds alone has been a huge detriment to DPS for Machinist. Uh, for me, at least. Maybe some other Machinists have found a way around that. But it's so good to see that. Because that'll fix so many of the problems I had with my rotation. I am excited to play around with that now. Very much so. Uh, Arcanist Summoner. 
Recast time reduced from 10 to 3 seconds for the summons. Okay. Oh, cool. So you can instant summon and then have it back in 3 seconds. Uh, Bile, the delay before the detrimental status applied has been reduced for all of your dots, which is great because there's like a server tick in between when you use the ability and when it actually takes effect. And sometimes thing could die before you did that. Or you would hit it and then hit Bane. Because what you really want is you really want to spread that. And it would not take effect because of that server tick and your Bane hit before the server tick. So that's great. Uh, Red Mage. MP cost reductions all across the board. This ought to make people very happy. Um, one of the best things about Red Mage is how quickly you can cast. But with the MP capped, there were situations where I would be halfway through a fate or halfway through a boss fight. And I would already be well below half MP uh, because I was casting like crazy. And yeah, that's what Lucid's for. But these cost reductions will help. It may not seem like a lot. Each one reduced by 100. But that adds up real quick. Um, enchanted reprise potency increased. Nice. And mana requirements changed from 1010 to 55. Cool. Scholar. Oh, I see Astrologian there too, and there's a lot in there, so I'm excited for that. Art of War potency increased from 150 to 160. That's good. Royal Mastery effect changed. Increased the potency of Ruin 2 and Art of War to 160. Nice. Okay. And then Sucker cast time is reduced from 2.5 to 2 seconds. Again, it may not seem like a lot, right? Half a second. But when you are in combat, half a second is actually a lot of time. So that's really cool. That's going to make Scholar even more fun to play. Scholar's the only healer that I have at 80 right now. I'm working on the other. But very, very much enjoyed leveling with Scholar. And I'm looking forward to some of these changes. That looks... I really like this. And then, of course, just the potency buff is not bad for Art of War at all. All right, let's take a look at Astrologian. Gravity, potency increased from 130 to 140. Cast time is reduced from 2.5 to 1.5. Helios, cast time is reduced from 2.5 to 2 seconds. Yes, please. Aspected Helios, cast time is reduced from 2.5 to 2 seconds. Healing potency has been increased from 100 to 200. Barrier damage nullification reduced from 250 to 125. Uh, okay, so the damage nullification is a lot less now, but it heals more. So it gives less of a shield, but heals more, and you can do it more often. That might be worth it. That might be a worthwhile change. I don't know. I feel like the barrier was really good, but Astrologian really struggled with healing, so it's probably worth it. And I say really struggled with healing compared to the other two healers. Uh, light speed, recast time reduced from 120 to 90. Awesome. Hyper light speed, effect change from reduces light speed, recast time by 10 seconds upon executing essential dignity to just reduces light speed, recast time to 90 seconds. That seems good. Celestial opposition, recast time reduced from 120 to 60 seconds. Oh, man, okay. Healing potency has been increased from 100 to 200. Barrier damage nullification has been reduced from 150 to 125. So, again, doubles the healing, has slightly less of a barrier, but still, you can do it half. You can do it twice as much now. So, that seems super worth it to me. Regen potency increased from 60 to 100. Effect radius has been increased from 10 to 15 yalms. Wow. Horoscope. Healing potency during horoscope is increased from 100 to 200. Horoscope Helios effect duration increased from 20 to 30 seconds. Nice. Uh, Divination, recast time reduced from 180 to 120. Damage increase effect changed from 2%, 4%, 6% to 4%, 5%, 6%. So it still stays the same at the at the max, but the lower levels are brought up, just like earlier uh, with Shoha. Sleeve draw effect changed. Before, it reset the recast timer of draw and grant two stacks of sleeve draw for 30 seconds, and it reduced the recast timer of draw to three seconds. Uh, to consume a stack of sleeve draw each time. Now, it draws a card from the Arcanum, from your Divining deck, and grants two stacks of sleeve draw. Uh, duration, 30 seconds. Sleeve draw effect, using your drawn Arcanum, consumes a stack of sleeve draw and draws another card. Again, that may seem like not a great change, but the big thing there is you get another card immediately that you could then, you can draw a card, use it for damage, have another card, and immediately, you know, be able to give another damage boost out, which is really good. It It's a small change, but it's going to make a big difference. And Celestial Intersection, healing potency has been increased from 150 to 200. Barrier damage nullification has been reduced from 250 to 200. Region potency increased from 80 to 150. So I think these changes will really help a lot with, with Astrologian. The big problem that Astrologian had was Scholar was putting out really good shielding and really solid healing. 
White Mage was putting out really good healing and really solid damage, plus the, the regen effect, right? And Astrologian was kind of in the middle of both of them when it came to what it could do, but was well behind both of them in its effectiveness. So the shielding was better with Scholar, the, sh the healing was better with White Mage, and that's the way it should be, right? But the healing was also better with Scholar than it really was with Astrologian, and Astrologian's whole kit felt kind of clunky because of that. It felt like you just weren't healing enough. And you were burning MP, you were drawing cards to make everybody else do more damage, but you weren't healing enough. And I definitely struggled a couple times in Holminster uh, running around as Astrologian. It, it was tough. And especially with the, the changes to the amount of damage that enemies can do. And Astrologian was still absolutely playable, don't get me wrong, but I think these changes will help a lot. The shielding suffers and that's a shame but the amount of extra healing astrologian is going to be able to do will help a lot when it comes to the way that it's kit so i'm very excited for that new actions have been added hagakure as an action or do you now not get hagakure until 68 they added hagakure back i forgot they took it away you get hagakure back now yeah feels good man an energy drain comes back to Scholar. Feels good, man. Feels good. I can't wait to put that back on the bar and play around with that. Healing actions performed outside of combat no longer build the limit gate. Yeah, figured that much. Uh, Savage Eden's Gate has been added. Uh, players can only enter register via the Raid Finder. <clears throat> Item level restrictions do not apply when registering as a full party. Uh, 440, 445, 450, 450. Uh, eight players, 90 minutes, 90 minutes, 90 minutes, 120. Oh, man, what is Titan's second phase? Um, to access Savage, players must speak with Luri and Amarang, uh, with a disciple, level 80 disciple war magic after completing the next piece of the puzzle. Upon completing Eden's Gate Savage duties, a treasure coffer will appear containing an Eden Grace coffer. Using this item transforms it into gear corresponding to the user's current job. In addition, the coffers that appear upon completing Sepulcher yield weapons. So that's really Treasure coffers do not yield armor and accessories, unlike previous Savage. Okay. So you're still going to be using um, Goetia or Phantasmagoria to be able to get your armor. Interesting. Okay. Uh, weapon coffer, head coffer, chest coffer, hand coffer, leg coffer, coffer, face coffer. Here's the coffer. So instead, you just get a coffer, just like you did in the MSQ, that gives you the... It's interesting. Your party contains players replaying an area prior to the weekly reset. The number of treasure coffers appearing upon completion will decrease. <clears throat> Furthermore, players will be ineligible for rewards from treasure coffers as well as ETA and Apocrypha when replaying an area prior to the reset. By selecting duty completion, players will not be matched with those who have already completed the... Interesting. There are one to four players in your party replaying, and only a single treasure coffer will appear. If there are five to seven players in your party replaying an arena, no treasure coffers will appear. Wow. Uh, item exchange. In addition to gear, players will receive an Eden's Gate Apocrypha from each area, which can be exchanged for gear of choosing. You receive one Eden's Gate Apocrypha for a week uh, upon completing said area for the first time. Uh, speaking with Google or Yo Yo. Players can exchange Eden's Gate Apocrypha for funny gear, uh, weapons for Sepulcher, and then, of course, the Paladin arm and shield separate, as they always have to be, uh, for 5-8, or 5-3, the weapons for 8, the head for 6, the body for 8, the hands for 6, the waist for 1, legs for 8, the feet for 4, or 6, the accessories for 4, and then Deep Shadow Solvent, Deep Shadow Twine, Deep Shadow Co. They've been added to the Raid Finder. EXP gained by trust NPCs has been increased. That achievement will be possible now. It was already possible before. That achievement will not drive me insane now, hopefully. So cool, thank you. New Elite Marks have been added. Allegan Tombstones of Phantasmagoria have been added. Players can only obtain 450 Allegan Tombstones of Phantasmagoria per week and carry a maximum of 2,000. Moreover, players can only receive Allegan Tombstones of Phantasmagoria after reaching level 80 with at least one class or job. Speak with Amark in Yulmor to exchange Allegan Tombstones of Phantasmagoria to gear. Speak with Sheetak in Yulmor to exchange, to enhance gear received in exchange for Allegan Tombstones of Phantasmagoria. The number of Allegan Tombstones received for completion of duty roulettes has been adjusted. 
For Expert, you now get 60 Goetia, 40 Phantasmagoria. For Leveling, you now get 100 Goetia, 20 Phantasmagoria. For Trials, you get 60 Goetia, 15 Phantasmagoria. For MSQ, you get 300 Poetics, 100 Goetia, 50 Phantasmagoria. For Alliance Rage, you get 100 Poetics, 100 Goetia, 50 Phantasmagoria. For Normal Rage, you get 80 Poetics, 60 Goetia, 20 Phantasmagoria. For Mentor Roulette, you get 30 Goetia, 10 Phantasmagoria. And for Front Lines, you get 50 Goetia, 20 Phantasmagoria. PvP adjustments. HP has been increased on Paladin from 1750 to 20k. For Warrior, the same way. For Dark Knight, the same way. And for Gunbreaker, the same way. Uh, Monk has been increased from 15 to 1750. Dragoon's been increased the same way. Ninja's been increased the same way. And so is Samurai. And then the Kaishis have been made instant in PvP as well. Beast, Heavy Metal, and Light Metal have been removed. Really? Huh. Okay. I did not expect that to ever be changed. I kind of liked Heavy Metal and Light Metal, but at the same time, it definitely made it where you were kind of, you were in a way penalized for working hard, right? For getting a lot of kills um, without turning in your medals, but that's why you turned in your medals. So it gave a, a complication there, made it interesting. I need to play around with the Feast now and see what it's like without them. Uh, new gear? I really like the way this gear looks, man. I like that Tomo. And is that a spear? Looks like a flag. I like that a lot. Um, yeah, this is good looking gear. I really like that chest piece. That's the savage gear, I'm guessing, then. New recipes have been added. All this will be listed at a later date. Master recipes, new mounts, a bed? How do I get that bed, man? I want to fly around on a bed. New minions, look at that guy. Uh, new achievements, another summoning bell has been added to the Crystarium. Over by the leaf quests, that's great. Uh, resolved issues. Long issue been resolved. An issue in the Jollers Scholar's Job Quest, a safe place to hide, where the quest required that Lustrate be used outside of combat. However, due to recent changes, it's no longer possible. Meaning the quest could not be completed. A different action is now required. To wow, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, that would be a huge problem. An issue wherein certain machinist job quests could not be completed after reaching level 76, which upgrades Hotshot to Air Anchor. A different action is now required to complete the quest. Okay. An issue in the Fate Attack on the High Bridge. Denouement, wherein under certain conditions more than one Bertram would appear. That's a problem. An issue wherein changing the appearance of Garuda Eggy to that of Carbuncle would cause the effects for Windblade to be displayed incorrectly. An issue wherein the tooltips for the Summoner PvE action Try Disaster were incorrect. Only the tooltips have been changed. No changes have been made to the action itself. An issue wherein the information regarding potency in the tooltips for the Monk PvE action Tornado Kick was incorrect. Only the information regarding potency has been corrected. No changes to the action itself. An issue wherein the tooltips for the White Mage PvP action Temperance were incorrect. The tooltips have been changed. No changes to the action itself. An issue wherein, under certain conditions, completing duties with one or more party members who have yet to complete the duty did not grant players second chance for Winter's Tales. Yeah, that's a shame. Oh, my Winter's Tales expired today. I forgot to turn it in. Oh, I'm such a fool. I had two lines. Maybe I can still get it in today. I doubt it. But maybe I can still get it in. I'll try. An issue in the Deep Dungeons wherein the player's HP and attack power were incorrect. An issue wherein, under certain conditions, VR hairstyles were no longer displayed after changing them with the esthetician. That's a problem. An issue wherein the recommended number of players were displayed incorrectly for time-worn glider skin. An issue wherein the effect for reuse not displayed in the crafting. There's only one thing that I was really hoping for, I forgot to bring it up earlier, that didn't get changed in the battle actions here, and that's Gunbreaker. Much like we talked about with Tri-Disaster and the other bios for Summoner, with Gunbreaker, there is a single server tick where you're at 1 HP before Super Bolide takes action and you become invuln um, after you've used the ability. And you can die in that tick. And I was hoping that would get addressed here. But seeing that they've done it for Summoner gives me hope that they will address it. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. How do you feel about these changes? And until next time, I have been Trey. This has been the Full Spectrum. Remember to always enjoy the Full Spectrum at Final Fantasy XIV. Off. No?